Hello viewers, in today's video, I'll be providing an in-depth update on a previous topic specifically, the distinction between the sample regions and reduce regions functions in Google Earth Engine. Before we dive into the content, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel for more valuable Google Earth Engine tutorials. Your subscription not only supports the channel, but also ensures you stay informed about the latest tutorials and enhancements. Let's get started. Initially, I'll utilize the map's geometry tools to create a small square feature. Following this, I'll proceed to load the SRTM 30 meters digital elevation model from the Earth Engine data catalog. Additionally, I'll add the dam onto the map, giving a 100% stretch for optimal visualization. Now, I'm going to analyze the digital elevation model DEM using a method called sample regions. It's important to use the right function based on the type of data, whether it's an image, image collection, feature, feature collection, array, and so on. These are all different data types in Earth Engine. Inside the sample regions method, I'll input various arguments. For instance, I'll specify the feature collection image scale, the projection, and the tile scale. Tile scale is a factor that helps manage memory usage during computations. By setting a to 16, I'm making sure our computations won't run out of memory. There's also an optional argument, geometries, which I've set to true. After configuring these settings, we'll print the sample variable and see the results. Oh dear, it seems we've encountered an error. This happens because Google Earth Engine's on-the-fly processing only allows printing up to 5,000 elements. You might be wondering why 5,000 when we've created just one square, right? Well, the thing is, the sample regions function samples every pixel within the image at a specific scale. In our case, there could be millions of pixels in that single or multi-band image. Don't worry. I'll explain when it's appropriate to use sample regions towards the end of this video. For now, let's visualize our feature collection on the map. Although it appears as a red square, zooming in reveals that it has sampled every single pixel. To manage the data, I'll limit the feature collection to 2, and we'll explore the elevation values it has sampled. Now, let's delve into the reduce regions method. Similarly, I'll apply this method to the image, specifying the necessary arguments. The feature collection, the reducer, in this case, mean, the scale, CRS, and tile scale. Utilizing the mean reducer is particularly relevant when dealing with point geometry, as both sample regions and reduce regions would return the same value the mean of a single pixel. For a deeper understanding, I recommend checking out my video on reducers in Google Earth Engine, link in the video description. After printing this variable, we'll observe on the console that we obtain a single value, representing the mean of the clipped image pixels within our polygon. If the feature collection comprises more than one feature, such as a polygon or line, reduce regions will calculate the mean values for all bands across all features, with default weighting. The reducer weighting I will explain in another video. There's also another image method called reduce region, designed to process a single geometry. Now, let's discuss their applications. Both methods find use in classification or extracting band values for images or image time series. If the feature collection consists solely of point geometries, either method can be employed to extract band values. However, if there's a mix of geometry types like points, polygons, and lines, sample regions will sample every pixel, while reduce regions will yield a single value, commonly known as the reduced value. Sample regions proves beneficial for pixel-based image classification, especially with complex geometries, though it may encounter memory limitations. To overcome this, export the sampled values to Earth Engine assets. On the other hand, reduce regions is apt for object-based classification, but achieving higher accuracy demands a substantial number of objects or features. The choice between them depends on your specific needs. If you found this information helpful, please like the video and consider subscribing for more beginner-friendly Google Earth Engine tutorials. For any queries add a comment or feel free to reach out via the email provided in the video description. Until next time, peace.